High prices at the pump, dependence on foreign oil. Our gasoline consumption is about 140 billion gallons per year. Air pollution, they could one day be problems of the past thanks to work going on now at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in Golden, Colorado. It's never been done before. We're trying to do something that's the first of a kind and really benefit society as well. And that's absolutely exciting. We're looking for domestically produced renewable feedstocks that we can convert to liquid fuels. Farmers are harvesting fields of corn not only for food, but for fuel. Most of the alternative fuel in the U.S. today is corn grain ethanol. Right now, it represents more than 2% of our gasoline supply. Not enough. NREL engineers say cellulosic ethanol could potentially eliminate the need for imported oil without eating up our corn supply. You don't get into the feed versus fuel issue. Issues. Cellulosic ethanol, it's plant matter. You have, say, exterior parts of the stock. Like the leftovers from the corn harvest. Pieces of, of cobs, uh, pieces of, of the leaf. Converted to liquid fuel at NREL. My name is Andy Aiden. I'm an engineer here at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. And this building that we're in right now is called the AFUF, the Alternative Fuels User Facility. Andy Aiden is part of this pioneer project to make fuel from organic plant matter known as biomass. These are biomass samples that we're getting ready to do a dry weight on. Biomass is made of three components, cellulose. This is what was mentioned in the President's State of the Union address as cellulosic biomass. Long chains of sugars known as hemicellulose and lignin. is kind of the glue that holds the plant together. The corn kernels used for grain ethanol are composed of starch, easy and inexpensive to convert but limited in supply. Biomass is abundant, but the cellulose and hemicellulose are structural carbohydrates. Nature's made these materials harder to break down. As a consequence, it takes more chemicals, higher temperatures to access the sugars in these materials. So here we are in the pilot plant. This is where all the magic happens. This is where it all goes down, NREL's bioprocessing pilot plant. This facility is built to handle one dry ton of biomass per day. Enough to churn out as much as 75 gallons of cellulosic ethanol, commercial scale plants, when they're built, will of course be much bigger and will produce hundreds of thousands of gallons a day. The biomass is brought in, cleaned up. We usually slurry that material, essentially wash it. And milled down. So this is one of our vats of milled corn stover. It's then moved upstairs and scanned with cutting edge technology that originated in NREL's compositional analysis lab. It's really a chemical fingerprint of the material. So that in a matter of minutes, we can tell how much feedstock is coming in. We can tell what the composition of that is in terms of sugars, glucose, xylose, arabinose, those types of things. Next, it's pretreatment. This is the part of the process where we start to break apart the biomass into its individual constituents, start to put some of the sugars into solution. The biomass is mingled with diluted acid under high pressure and heat. If I were to take this off and take a whiff of it, it would smell sweet, kind of like raisins or molasses or something along those lines. Enzymes, which are just natural proteins, are introduced to release sugars from the cellulose. More effective enzymes are being engineered to make the conversion more efficient and less expensive. Five years ago, the cellulase enzymes were the single largest cost component of this whole process. Now, within the past five years, industry has really helped to reduce that cost by over a factor of 20. Finally, the sugars are fermented into fuel. Really, this is a glorified brewery. The goal is to reduce the production time down to three days and to reduce the cost from the current $2.25 a gallon estimate to $1.07 a gallon or less by 2012. Take a whiff of it. Cellulosic ethanol. It smells a lot like hooch. Born of biomass. Switchgrass, you heard that mentioned in the President's State of the Union address. And then all the way over to a hardwood poplar feedstock like this. After they extract the juice out of the sugar cane, they're left with so-called bagasse. And brewed into the blueprint for clean, homegrown renewable fuels. This could be a win for the planet because it's carbon neutral technology, a win for rural economies because really you're creating a, a new agricultural resource base.
The promise for a brighter tomorrow. It's driving NREL's biomass research today. I'm living my dream.